Hey, how's it going guys? My name's Eric and welcome back to a brand new video here on the Bioshock Hub. This one is something that I've been thinking about for quite a long time. And very quickly, if you guys enjoy more face cam videos or enjoy face cam videos in general, please let me know down in the comment section below. I will have no problem making more for you guys. But today's video, like I mentioned, this is something that I've been thinking about for a while. And if you're a fan of the DLC in the Bioshock franchise, you would know that Bioshock 1 arguably has the worst DLC in the game. And quite frankly, it was very underwhelming compared to Bioshock 2's Minerva's Den, as well as Infinite's Clash in the Clouds, Burial at Sea Episode 1, and Episode 2. So, why was it so underwhelming? It had one of the best things in the franchise, don't get me wrong, but in terms of progressing the story with additional story in the DLC, that's where I think it falls flat. So the first thing we're going to be looking at here, obviously, is the museum, because technically that's part of a DLC type of content. I know it basically comes with the game, but basically this every or this shows you everything that was cut from the game. I've made a video on this if you guys want to check it out. I will leave a link in the description below. But as you can see, you can see all of the different character models, like the whale that was at the start of the game. And then you can see like all the different big daddies and different characters that were cut from the game because they had no purpose in the game. So this part is really cool. If you guys haven't checked this out in its entirety, I would highly recommend booting up Bioshock 1 and checking up the museum for yourself. Now, however, let's go back to the main menu here after this loads. Because there is a couple of things that I want to show you here. So you go down to additional content and we get challenge rooms. So you go from having a very insightful museum where you can see rejected concept arts, you can see just concept arts of things that didn't make the game in general, you can see other renders of what was in the game, like the whale, as I mentioned, and then you get this. It's just, in my opinion, this was kind of half-assed, and don't get me wrong, you guys know I, I love this game, but this just wasn't good. A lot of the challenges are really simple, and I just, I just don't feel connected to it. Like I said, with Bioshock 2, you had Minerva's Den, along with the multiplayer on the original version. Then, for Infinite, you had Clash in the Clouds, which, in my opinion, was very underrated. And then you had Burial at Sea Episode 1 and Episode 2. So, for instance, you can see as you walk in here... You're going to have to get this big daddy and this little sister through this doorway. That's the main goal. And it is pretty simple to go all the way through and get everything you need. However, it just, like I said, it just doesn't do anything to further the story. There were a lot of many different unanswered questions within the first game that I feel like they could have worked on I suppose and I just I just don't know I just don't know I wasn't necessarily feeling this so I guess the fact that it's here I mean cool I guess it's something else to do but as I mentioned before it does nothing to further Bioshock 1's experience in my opinion I would much rather just have more story give me like a different side story or something and I think another reason why it was so underwhelming compared to uh, Minerva's Den the burial at sea episodes etc was just simply for the fact that this was the first game and they probably weren't thinking about DLCs or anything like that in terms of their success they just wanted to put out DLC to see if people would actually play it it was kind of like a test and it worked for two and infinite 
But in this situation, I just don't think it worked. It did not work that well. Go! No, I didn't want that. There we go. And see what I mean? This thing is so simple to do. It took me a while to figure it out when I first played this to nine or ten years ago, now that I think about it. It's, it's a pretty long time. Just thinking back at that now. And just like that, we make it. Without taking any damage. Awesome. Here you go, big boy. Go open the door for me. Thank you. I'm just doing this just to show, like, a demonstration, just in case you guys haven't actually done this before. I'm sure you might have, like, dabbled with it a little bit, but have you actually gone all the way through and completed each and every single challenge? I don't know. Maybe. Thank you, and I'm glad that the big daddies don't attack you. That's really nice. I was just checking to see what the time was. So, in your opinion, let me know down in the comment section below. What do you guys think is the reason why this was so underwhelming? And kill him. Thank God I have enough of these to actually keep kiting them back and forth. And boom. That was actually a really good time, surprisingly. I didn't mess up, which normally I do. Hey, it's all good. We win. Four minutes, 52 seconds. So, like I said, what do you guys think makes Bioshock 1's DLC underwhelming? For me personally, it's just the lack of the continuation of the story. We could have gotten maybe an hour and a half to two hour DLC, kind of like how Minerva's Den was, where, I, I don't know, it could have showed something with Jack actually living afterwards, or something to that effect. At least, like, show what happened to the little sisters you saved, rather than get the montage at the end with the good ending. So, I think they could have done something like that. But in terms of the challenge rooms, I feel that they're really just not there for me. They're not my cup of tea. It seems like they're really simple challenges, and I don't know. I just like continuation of the story personally, and I think a lot of you guys would actually agree with that as well. So, again, let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, and if you still enjoy the like face cam, live commentary, whatever it may be, let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed and want to help the channel grow, the video get out there, etc., etc., would you kindly drop a like on the video, subscribe, share the video with some family and friends, and turn on notifications. That way, you will never miss another video or a live stream when I go live. If you want to stay up to date with me outside of YouTube, you can follow me on Twitter, my Instagram, 
where you can join my Discord server. All the links will be in the description if you would kindly go down there and check those out. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much for the recent support, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care, guys, and talk to you in the next one. Peace.